Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you my endometriosis story. Before I get started, I want to tell you what endometriosis is. Endometriosis is when tissue similar to the lining of the uterus grows outside the uterus and other areas of the body. Now, it can be confused that it's actually the tissue inside the uterus that, is, that implants outside, but it's tissue similar to the inside of the uterus. So, as it grows outside the uterus, it'll implant itself in other areas of your body, most commonly around the ovaries, um, the peritoneum, cul-de-sac, and sometimes in, on, in and on the uterus, and in rare cases, it's spread to as far as the lungs, brain, and diaphragm. So, now that you know what endo is, now you're going to find out how it affects someone's life. Everything started to be weird around the time I got my period when I was about 12, 13. Um, my periods were extremely irregular. I would get them sometimes twice a month, or sometimes I'd get them once every three months, or, you know, it could be go on for a whole month and it was never regular and it was always odd. And they used to be extremely light and slowly they got extremely heavy to the point where um, I could wear a tampon and a pad and it would flood over and stain my pants. I was that girl in school that had the pants that got her blood through and the white pants that got stained because I didn't even know I was on my period. Um, and it was extremely embarrassing and hard. And we didn't really expect anything because my general practitioner said, oh, you just got your period, it's normal, you're starting, it's gonna adjust itself, it'll, you know, get normal, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. So, I believed them, and I waited, and eventually I started to get pain, and I would get pain on my ovaries, and they would be these horrible stabbing pains, and I would go to my doctor, my GP, nope, everything's normal, they're just cramps, maybe you're hurting because you're ovulating, maybe it's because your periods are irregular, so I went along with that too, and eventually I took my first trip to the ER, and that was January 27th, 2013, and the reason I remember this so vividly is because it was such a horrible experience for me. I was about 14, maybe 13, and I went in and they immediately thought I was pregnant because of how bloated I was and drug tested me, which I know is, you know, normal, all ERs do that. But then I sat there in pain for eight hours. For eight hours, they let me sit on a table while they did tests, while they did scans, ultrasounds, pelvic exams, and remember, I'm a 13, 14 year old virgin who's never had anything inside me but a tampon and it was terrifying for me and they practically threw me around on that table like I was a piece of meat. After finding nothing, I was devastated because I didn't know what was going on. They told me I had a small cyst on my ovary and I just figured, well, well, all the pain is that and I went on to a gynecologist. Luckily. My first gynecologist was amazing. I went to Dr. Esther Clayton in Melbourne here in Florida and she let me try every treatment I wanted. She she started me on low dose birth control to help the pain. She let me choose my treatment and help me figure out what my body was going through and she was the first one to mention endometriosis. I had never heard the word before. I never heard of it. Um, I knew that my aunt had it. But I did not know the severity or what the disease really was or what it could do to you. So when I heard that, I went home, I did my research, I talked to my aunt, I talked to support groups and I started getting into the support groups and talking to everyone and I figured out that, you know, I have all these symptoms, I have the heavy bleeding, I have the pain, I, I had these stabbing pains in my ovaries but now they're everywhere I'm having these horrible cramps. You know, what could this be? I'm missing school, I'm missing social events, I'm not able to do things, what's wrong with me? And it all was put together and I figured out that I probably had endo. So for the next nine months, I tried 
to do as many treatments I possibly could without getting the surgery done because I did not want to go and do an invasive surgery. So I tried um, estrogen, progesterone, m estrogen, progesterone mixed. I tried the Depo-Provera shot. I had the Mirena IUD and nothing was working. I refuse to do Lupron as my choice. I know many people are against it and personally I am, but if you do your research and you choose to do it, I believe that you should be able to. But for personally, for me, I chose not to and I'm glad I didn't because I'm doing much better now. But before we get to that, I will tell you what ended up happening. So after nine months of pain and nothing helping and uh, going on painkillers, I was on tramadol for about two years actually. But through these nine months, I was on tramadol and then I slowly graduated to hydrocodone and the doses just went up and I, nothing was helping. And I probably managed at least three trips to the ER a month and it was getting out of hand. So we finally looked into getting the surgery done. So we had moved to South Carolina because of my dad's job. And so I looked for doctors there. I had gone to a few doctors and at this point I had been to so many ER trips and so many doctors, I was just sick of it. I was sick of being treated like a drug addict. I was sick of being treated like I was faking my pain because there was no evidence of anything. And I was sick of being thrown around on the table and having speculums and fingers being stuck in me constantly. And I was just done and I didn't want to deal with it, but I had to. So we found a doctor named Dr. Bomer. Before him, I had gone to Dr. Stepp, who was supposedly a specialist, but he was awful. Um, I had a very bad experience with him. He w wanted to do Lupron. He, did, he was treating me, you know, like I didn't have the disease. He was very, very rude, but, you know, I've heard success stories, success stories from other people, so I'm not going to bash him too much. I know that he has helped others, so don't take my word for it. Everyone has different experiences. It could have been because I was young and he was just not wanting to work on a minor, but after him, I ended up at Dr. Bomer, who was in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, and he did my first surgery ever. That surgery was October 7th, 2013. He found endo almost everywhere. It was all over my peritoneum, in my cul-de-sac, on my bowel. Um, he saw scar tissue on my appendix, but at the time he did not take it out or do anything. Here you can see my surgery photos. On the left is my uterus and my ovaries. If you can look closely, you'll, you'll see small spots on the back behind my uterus, and those are spots of endometriosis. You can also see that on the left and right sides. And on the right picture is after he, he had cut out the endo and pretty much scraped my whole peritoneum. Here on the left, you can see small spots of endo reflecting off the light, and on the right is my ovary. And if you look closely behind that, you'll see a lot of dark little tiny spots, and that is also endo. In this photo on the left, you can see my other ovary, and there are spots of endo behind and in front of my ovary, and if you look closely in the back, you can see more dark spots of endo. In the right photo, you can see endo pretty clearly. On the left side, it's a lot lighter, and it's reflecting off the light, and in the middle, you can see dark spots, very dark spots of endo. I believe he did his best to remove everything that he possibly could. Sadly, my recovery went very badly. Eight hours after the surgery, I had not peed and I ended up in the ER because I could not go to the bathroom. I ended up with a catheter and it was extremely painful. And for a month, I was stuck in bed in excruciating pain and he had put the Mirena IUD in during the surgery. So after about two weeks of the Mirena being in, we took that out because it was causing extreme cramping because my cervix was too small and it was rejecting the marina. After getting that out, my cramping was a little better, but but I thought that all my pain was from that and it, it wasn't. I was in so much pain during my recovery. I was throwing up. I was barely able to eat. I was losing weight. Um, I couldn't move. I had to have my mother bathe me, wash my hair. It was pathetic. I, I had to have her dress me and put me in my bed and I had no hope. I could not do anything. 
and I became depressed and I was scared that I was never gonna be healthy again I was scared that I would never be normal I would never be a normal teenager I'd never go to school again I'd be stuck doing all mine I'd be stuck at home with my parents my entire life because I wouldn't be able to take care of myself and no one should ever feel like that and I know Dr. Bromer did his best at his ability and he was a very good doctor and he gave me a very good aftercare and I do thank him for that but he wasn't a specialist and my recovery did go badly so for about a year after that surgery I suffered with pain and I suffered not being able to do things with my friends and not being able to go to school and not being able to do the things I like to do because I would be in physical pain within an hour of being out even 30 minutes as soon as I walked out the door my stomach blew up as a balloon and the pain started and there was no controlling it with painkillers anymore and if I did too much I was in the ER and that was just how it went and it became a cycle and it became a routine and that was my life and there was not absolutely nothing I could do about it I felt lost and and um I'm sorry I finally found hope when I I finally found hope when I found out about Dr. Sinervo now I knew about other specialists but he was the closest one to me we had moved back to Florida and I really needed surgery with a specialist the pain was getting out of control and everything was going downhill for me and depression was taking over me so I was on North Endurance acetate for about six months and that's how long it took me to adjust to the pill and actually get relief from it um, if I didn't wait that long I would have had no relief and to this day I'm still on that pill and it's still helping me and I haven't had a period for about two years so I had talked to Dr. Sinervo and I sent in my records and he, I got a call back and I was ecstatic he told me he could help me he told me he could help my pain he told me that I could be normal pretty much so with this news I was so excited and I was so happy but I found out that he doesn't take insurance and it took me a long time to actually get in with him my parents had a hard time and I did have to do a surgery fundraiser and that's why I recommend that if you do see a specialist make sure that you find one that's affordable and in as close as possible to you and remember that you don't have to go to Dr. Sinervo just because everyone says he's the best doctor he is amazing and he is awesome but there are other specialists and there are other people that can help you but anyway after about a year of pain and fundraising and working very hard to get in with him I finally scheduled my surgery it was scheduled in July and I was so happy but then I found out that we weren't able to afford it so we kept fundraising and we kept working towards it and that's what you have to do you have to be your own advocate you have to work towards it you have to push yourself and your family and take the help that you need because you can give it back when you're better I promise you that so the surgery ended up being rescheduled for October 10th 2014 almost exactly a year from my first surgery and I was extremely scared and just ecstatic at the same time I, I didn't know what to do I would cry and I would laugh at the same time I was just so happy and we traveled to Atlanta to see him from Florida and I got into his office to see him and he was so nice and he validated my pain and he validated everything that I had been feeling for those years and he made me feel like my pain was real and like I deserved this and I deserved to feel better for once in my life when the day for surgery came he came in and he let me have my teddy bear for surgery and he dressed him up for surgery too and put the incisions tape on just like I would have and he let me take him back and I remember before going under he held my hand and he told me everything was gonna be okay and it made me feel so happy and I was just relaxed and I was ready and he prayed with my family before, before surgery and he was such a kind soul 
and he had great aftercare and he was a great person and when I woke up from surgery I was so happy I no longer had back pain and that was something that I had had for years he did a presacral nerectomy and so I no longer felt the back pain that I used to and he also had found endo almost everywhere he removed my appendix my um, left ovary was attached to my bowel with adhesions and endometriosis and he removed everything that he possibly could and he I still have the pictures and he did an amazing job my bowel was twisted out of place and it was moved at least two inches up from the adhesion pulling on it and he removed it and hopefully it would it went back in place and as far as I can tell with how I'm doing it did here in this top picture you can see my uterus and my ovaries my uterus is on the top and the lower part is my bowel you can see all those stringy mucusy like things and those are adhesions that are pulling on different parts of the inside of me and you can see where they are out of place and on the lower one you can see adhesions as well in this picture on the top you can see adhesions and on the bottom picture you can see where Dr. Sonerville has actually cut out adhesions and endo and cauterized it to close the wounds and stop the bleeding in this top picture you can actually see the adhesions very well and you can see a part of my bowel which is the yellow part and if you look closely you can see that the adhesions are pulling on it and in the lower part you can see that those stringy adhesions are everywhere and pulling everything out of place here on the top and the bottom pictures you can actually see where he has cut and cauterized the endo and adhesions these pictures are actually from the inside of my bladder and I believe the inside of my uterus as well in this picture on the top I believe it's inside of my urethra inside my bladder or possibly the inside of my uterus and on the bottom you can see more adhesions and the lower part the yellow part is my bowel recovery was pretty easy I did not expect it to be that easy I recovered within two weeks I wanted to do anything I could I wanted to jump and I wanted to run and I wanted to play and be a normal teenager again but I knew I had to take it easy because you have to let your body recover but I felt amazing and I never felt this way in in years and it's almost like you forget what it's like to not be in pain you forget what it's like to not wake up and have to take all these painkillers and all these pills and and uh, start your regimen for the day and take it slow and now you can just get up and, and do things and do things the way you used to and a few months after that I started physical therapy with um, Dr. Sherry Lorraine here in Melbourne and she's amazing. She actually is helping me with my pelvic floor dysfunction that I actually ended up developing from endo. She and another doctor work with me with exercises to help train my pelvic floor to relax because it is still very tight from being in pain for so many years and having those muscles be so extremely tense and tight all the time. They've helped me realize how much you use your abdominal muscles and how much I had been holding myself and just clenching everything and keeping everything so tight for so many years and they're helping me relax everything and loosen everything and make sure that I don't have pain from that because I do not have any endo pain anymore. I have diminished my endo pain but I still get bowel and pelvic pain in my vagina because of my pelvic floor dysfunction. And with them working with me and helping me out, it's making it a lot easier for me. And hopefully one day I can be completely and totally pain free from absolutely everything. And that's my story. I'm doing much better than I was three years ago. I don't no longer have to deal with that. I'm working towards getting my GED and going to nursing school. And I have a life ahead of me. And I still suffer with depression, but I fight it every day, and I work towards being happy and healthy and helping others achieve the same thing. Thank you all for watching.